Good morning and welcome to Epiphany 2, a time when we look at the, the light that Jesus Christ brings in to our life. So let us join our hearts in prayer. Loving God, we come to you today so filled with a desire to do your will, to live in your way, to allow the light of Christ that abides within us to shine for the world to see. Our hearts and ears and minds are open to hearing your word for us today. We are gathered in our homes and community to sing your praises. And so we ask that as we gather as a faith community today, that you would just gather us close Help us to hear your word and direct us on, your, on our way to serve your community of Waynefleet and Port Colburn and all the regions around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning comes from our black hymn book, Hymn number 24, Majesty. out of Nazareth. Nathaniel has some opinions, some assumptions about Nazareth. 
Have you ever made any assumptions? Assumptions like, I've seen his type before. He'll never change. Or, she is always so negative. I already know what she will say. Or, he won't understand. He never does. Or how about, it's always been like this. It will never change. And finally, nothing good can come of that situation. People of faith, people like Nathaniel, people like you and me, make these and all sorts of assumptions every day. Sometimes our assumptions are about other people, how they will behave, what they will say, what we can expect from them, or what we assume they think or believe. Other times, we look at particular situations, like a disagreement in our marriage, or national unrest, or a teenager trying to grow up, and we declare it is hopeless. We are absolutely sure nothing good can come from that situation. Then there are those times when we look at ourselves or a part of our life. Maybe it's a secret we have carried for years or the illness we face each day or the addiction we hide or the hurts we have caused others, or the loneliness and lostness of grief. And we say it will never get any better. We say nothing good can come from this situation. We may or may not speak our assumptions out loud, but they rattle through our heads and influence what we do. You know what happens when you assume, right? The old saying has some truth in it, but I am thinking of something else. And here it is. The assumptions we make destroy our relationships. They destroy the love that is around us and they destroy the quality of life that God has given to us. When we make assumptions, we think we know more than what we really do. Assumptions actually act as our limitations. They narrow our vision. They close off the possibility of change and growth, not only for ourselves, but for others. Our assumptions deny the possibility of reconciliation, healing, a different way of being, and a brand new life. Ultimately, assumptions also impoverish our faith and proclaim there 
is no room for God to show up and act in that person, moment, or circumstance. Now it is no coincidence that Nathaniel is sitting under the fig tree when he makes his comment about Nazareth. It is the fig tree, after all, that gave Adam and Eve the leaves behind which they hid from God and themselves. It is a fig tree that Jesus would later curse for producing no fruit, no signs of life. Assumptions become our hiding place. They are not fruitful. Assumptions keep us from engaging life, ourselves, each other, and God at a deeper level. Nathaniel does not doubt that God will fulfill the Old Testament promises he is not surprised by and does not even question that Philip could have found the one about whom Moses in the law and the prophets spoke. Nathaniel's shock and disbelief instead are that the fulfillment of the law and the prophets could come out of Nazareth. Nathaniel has as much faith as the next God, but Nazareth? Really? No way. Not there. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? We all have our Nazareth. Sometimes they are our assumptions about other people or particular circumstances. Mostly though, our assumptions are about us, about pieces of our lives, our fears, our prejudices, our guilt, our losses, our wounds. Can anything good come from these? For some of us, we take these assumptions of ours and we project them onto other people or situations. We assume others will act as we have or think as we have thought. Assumptions keep life shallow and superficial. If we assume we know what will come out of a situation or what will be the behavior of another, then we do not have to risk a deeper knowing and being known by the other individual. At the deepest level, our Nazareth are about our understanding of God. We cannot believe that God can be present, active, and revealed in Nazareth whether it be another person, a relationship, a situation, or our very own life. We just cannot see how anything good can come out of Nazareth. It is so hard to see life in the midst of death, hope, in places of despair and good and beautiful in what looks like the bad 
and the ugly. It is sometimes easier to just assume. For us, Nazareth is a blind spot. Just like when we are driving a car and we cannot see the other vehicle moving alongside us. We must turn to look more closely. In the same manner, we must intentionally look to see with our God eyes more clearly the situation or person before us. And when we do so, we see that for God, Nazareth is a place of God's very own manifestation and self-revelation. Now, I wonder if some of you are thinking that it just seems so ungodlike to show up in Nazareth, whether it is a town, a person, or a situation. Nazareth is too common and ordinary and even mundane. Shouldn't a person or place of God's coming be more deserving, special, acceptable, holy, better behaved, likable, more regular at church, someone who prays more, or is better dressed? The Nathaniel in each one of us has a particular set of conditions or prerequisites that must be met before God will appear and act. And that says more about us than it does God. God is not limited by our assumptions. For every Nazareth, there is an invitation to come and see. For every assumption we make, there is a deeper truth to be discovered, a new relationship to be experienced, and a new life to be lived. Our Nazareth become the place of God's epiphany, God's self-revelation. Over and over and over again, Jesus shows up from the Nazareth of our lives and calls us out from under the fig tree. Whenever we leave that fig tree, we open ourselves to see God present and at work in the most unexpected places and people. As the assumptions fall away, a new life and a new world arise. The fulfillment of God's promises and earthly life happen in Nazareth. The last place we would have thought that possible is the first place God chooses. Come and see. Our salvation and Ely happen where we thought nothing good could happen. Reconciliation and love are revealed in relationships we were certain nothing good could come from. In Nazareth, the seemingly hopeless situations of life 
Well, they begin to bear fruit. Words of forgiveness and compassion are spoken by people we were sure could never say such things. God puts life back together for each one of us in Nazareth. There is more happening in Nazareth than we ever, ever thought possible. You see, not just anything good comes out of Nazareth. The one who is good the one who is good comes from Nazareth. This is the word of God for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Holy One, we acknowledge today, God, that we make lots of assumptions. Even as your people, we assume certain things about ourselves, about others, about any given re uh, uh, situation. We assume, God, that we may just know a little bit better than you. And yet, God, it is out of these situations and circumstances and people, the circumstances and places that we would call Nazareth, that we find you bringing new life to each one of us. And we are so grateful, God, that even though we have these blind spots where we're given to not seeing you, that you continue to work in the midst of that and help our eyes and hearts to open that we see you and understand the life-giving power that you give to each one of us through these people and circumstances. We thank you. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your faithfulness to us and your encouragement for us to continue to walk in your path and believe in your presence in our daily living. We pray this day, God, for the governments around the world, the governments that are making such tough decisions right now for the welfare of the citizens of their lands. We thank you that they are men and women that listen to the wisdom of those around them and that indeed they are guided by your love and wisdom and purpose for each one of us, God. We thank you. We thank you for that. And we thank you, God, for the frontline workers, for the medical teams, for the scientists, for the individuals that are stocking our grocery shelves and delivering to us food, for those who are growing food. We thank you for all of these frontline workers who are making a difference for us during this time of pandemic. Keep them and all of us safe. Lay your healing hand upon all of us, God, and may we feel your power and strength and peace as you direct us 
through these days. We pray as well, God, a special prayer for our friends and neighbors in the United States of America. They are dealing with turmoil and, and recovery in their nation. And we say a special prayer of peace and hope and healing for each one of them. May they be given your strength and peace and wonder as they move forward through this next week with you guiding and leading them in the decision-making that goes on in their government. We now lift up to you, God, prayers from the silence of our hearts. Let us now pray in silence. We thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these, our prayers. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in the heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 424 in the praise hymn book, Jesus Calls Us.